Support WrestleTalk! Order the magazine using the link below. Pete Dunne debuts! We've got new tag team champions! And it's Under Siege Part 2, baby! I'm Ollie Davis and this is the 6th of November 2017 edition of Monday Night Raw in about four minutes. Despite the opening video package being all about Braun Strowman murdering the Miz Taraj, Miz only really talked about SmackDown's bathroom break Baron Corbin for the first two thirds of the segment. Miz's interview with Kurt Angle was awkwardly broken up by trying to three separate video recaps from last week, a straight promo would have been far more effective between the two. Kurt made Braun vs Miz for later that night. After Jason Jordan smashed Elias' guitar last week, the two faced each other in a guitar on a pole match. Sadly, just like the vegetables at TLC, the inanimate guitar was more over than babyface Jason Jordan. Asuka squashed her second local competitor in as many weeks, but the crowd sounded even more disinterested than last Monday. The Emma matches have profoundly affected Asuka's momentum. Hopefully Alicia f adding her to Team Raw can work on getting that back. Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews looked way too happy making their way down to the ring for a match against Samoa Joe. So Joe did what his chance warned. He killed them, attacking them during their entrance and then cutting a fiery promo, challenging someone else to stand in his way. Enter Finn Balor. Recalling their NXT Championship feud, Joe and Finn had a terrific match, even enough intrigue for a second bout with a double countout finish. Both men having to be separated by security. Balor and Joe obviously strongly dislike each other, which means if my job was on the line, I'd definitely want them working together for me on the same team. Great call adding them both to Team Raw, Kurt Angle. Getting more ad happy than a United States title match on SmackDown, Kurt then announced his illegitimate son Jason Jordan as Team Raw's final member, causing Booker T to nearly implode on commentary. Angle's reason was that he needed someone at Survivor Series he can trust, which pretty much confirms Jordan's turning heel on him. Bailey's crowd reactions in England are like glimpses of what could have been, an alternative reality where WWE helps create new stars rather than booking them into indifference. So of course, rather than giving Bailey a huge pop, it was Banks who tapped out Alicia f for the win and then got added to Team Raw for Survivor Series. Bailey did not look happy, possibly teasing a heel turn against her best friend forever, Sasha. Kane gave Braun the DQ win in his match against The Miz. Unpopular opinion? I'm into Strowman vs Kane. I think the Finn Balor burial has distracted from what is actually a really fun monster vs monster feud that is effectively getting Braun over more. Strowman yelling at Kane, you put me in a garbage truck! And Kane doing his sit up no sell after Braun's running power slam made both guys look very strong. Enzo Amore opened his compulsory way too long promo by declaring himself the biggest thing to enter the UK since the bubonic plague. Too soon, man. Too soon. He was interrupted by Raw's latest debut, the UK champion, the bruiserweight Pete Dunne. He received a huge pop in his home country and he carries himself like a megastar. Unfortunately, this all came in a cruiserweight segment, which has imposed the glass ceiling on so many incredibly talented performers before him. Cough Neville, cough Austin Aries. Dunne could genuinely walk right into the Intercontinental or United States title pictures on either brand and not feel out out of place. Hopefully he won't be limited to 205 Live. Sheamus and Cesaro used the classic heel tactic of wearing the hometown crowd's rival sports team shirts, revealing Liverpool kits under their jackets. They went on to have a fantastic title match with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose when Big E's New Day introduction suddenly sounded over the crowd. Big E, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods then entered through the audience, making fun of how long Raw is, and then announcing Under Siege Part 2 baby! This brought out the entire Raw roster to chase them off, led by the Balor Club of Finn, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. But in the confusion, Sheamus hit Rollins with a brogue kick. The match was still going on, and Sheamus are your new tag team champions. It was an awesome closing angle. Not just a cliffhanger for next week's Raw, where Roman Reigns' return will presumably set up a New Day vs Shield match, but also for Smackdown the following night, which has a title match of its own that Raw could interfere in return. Jinder Mahal defending his WWE Championship against AJ Styles. So that was this week's Raw in about four minutes. Here's the usual ratings recap from top to bottom in all core average poor 
and boar. I'll reveal my rating very shortly, but first, vote in the poll above my head to give yours. I'll announce the results in tomorrow's Wrestle Talk news. Like so many good three hour episodes of Raw, this would have been a spectacular two hour show. Dunn's debut, the New Day Invasion, the Joe vs. Bala match, but the first hour was slow to get going, and the women's division has become very underwhelming. This week's Raw is core. More WWE wrestlers have been released, and is Chris Jericho's New Japan move because of backstage heat with Triple H? Click the videos to the left to find out, press subscribe, and support Wrestle Talk. Order issue one of the Wrestle Talk magazine now. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was wrestling.